So if you unplug the drive or you power it off, when you power it back on, it looks at the garbage collection routine and it starts right back where it left off, even though there may be something new added to the garbage collection routine during this cycle while you've booted and run it. It's not going to happen in that order. It's going to happen in the order of the queue and how it stored it. So that's physically the function of wear leveling to try to keep the, the chip from being destroyed in the process of using it. So this is what it looks like on a hard drive. If I had a hard drive and I opened up a file and I edited this file, and this doesn't always happen because like Word makes temporary files, then replaces the file, then does something else with it, but in a, I can write to that sector. I could physically touch that sector, write something back, and in forensics, we basically do that all the time. We go and we say, I want sector 125, give me one sector, sector 125 and go look at it and write something or change something or do whatever you want to do. So in a hard drive, we have that ability. <clears throat> But in a solid state disk now, because we can't change the state of the cells that have already been written, if we open a file and we modify it, it can't write it back to the same location. It cannot put it in its same location. So it will take the content when you make a save or a change, and now it's virtualizing what it's doing. It's actually writing the content to a new location, a new set of sectors that you didn't know about and you have no control over. And you can't go look at them or do something to them, make a change or write something to them. So physically, it's going to take the file, it's going to put it in a new location, then it's going to take the block that the content came from, put it in a garbage collection routine, and eventually it's going to get around to clearing that block. It's got to wait till every sector in the block that is defined is released, because an entire block has to be released, not just a sector. You're going to see that in a second. <clears throat> So this is what we're talking about and why we're trying to protect the chip and basically not destroy it is because of write endurance. Write endurance, every time that something is written into it, it physically is starting to destroy the silicon physically in, in, in the cell over time. And the discussion seems to be, how many times is that going to take? Sometimes some vendors are saying it's going to take 100,000 writes. 100,000 writes before it dies is the typical answer. But some of them are now saying a million. Some of them are saying 10 million before it actually dies. And how many of them do you think they really know? Zero. I mean, if it dies, it dies, right? I mean, they don't know when it's going to die. If they knew that, then they could do a better job of predicting what was going to happen here. So they don't know, but as they're starting to change materials and use different materials, they may have a better lifespan. But traditionally right now, up to, to, up to now, what you've been buying has pretty much been all the same stuff. And so they're just guessing how long it's going to last. So basically what they have to do is they have to add spare sectors in so that they can add some lifespan to it. So when you buy, you know, if you were to buy a 64 meg stick, it might not be 64 meg, it might be 128, but they just call it 64, and they use the extra space for spare sectoring. Same thing for gigabyte sticks or anything else. So when you get beyond a certain number, physically there's some extra sectoring there for them to be able to use it. <clears throat> so I found this interesting. I, I have this manufacturer's quote that I got all, right off of their web page, so you can hunt it down. I'm not going to put who the manufacturer is, but you can find it. Uh, so physically, when flash memory wafers are tested and probed, the distribution of bad and weak and strong dyes are identified across the wafer. Bad cells are marked, and the remaining cells are sorted into consumer and industrial quality flash. And then consumer grade flash is what makes it into the mass marketed devices through retail chains. So basically, they're telling you that they're selling you crap. That's what they're saying. They're saying, we tested all these things, and Here's the crappy ones. We're going to sell the good ones to maybe Cisco or somebody else, and we're going to sell the bad ones to, you know, you know, Fry's or something like that with a generic name on it or Micro Center with a generic name on it. So I'm not picking on them. I'm just saying that's what you're buying, and most of the time that's how you get a $6 memory stick as opposed to the $40 memory stick that might be a better buy. So how many people have bought a Micro Center memory stick? Okay. How many people have returned them and got one replaced under lifetime warranty? Yeah, or threw them away, or so a few of you. So, but have you also noticed that maybe those sticks are a little bit slower than the other sticks? Have, no? Okay, well maybe you should do some timing tests because you'll find out they're about four times slower than some of the other memory sticks. So, but anyway, so that's ultimately what you're talking about. Uh, again, you know you're buying a cheap one, so it's not like a big surprise to you as opposed to buying like a, a you know, a SanDisk memory stick or something that's a higher quality that has has better code or something like that. But Anyway, so that's what you're dealing with. You're buying some crap. So 
this is the breakdown of all the stuff I was just talking about. I wanted to give you kind of an overhead view of what we're looking at um, because this is different than what we're used to dealing with with a hard drive. Physically, you have your smallest unit as we go down through a cell and then we go to a byte. We get to our smallest writable unit, which is a sector. Now, these numbers mean the 512 plus 16 is there 16 extra sectors for flags, for things that can change. And so for every 512, there's always going to be 16. But only for 256 meg sticks and below do you have 512. So everything that's above 256 megs is going to be 2048 plus 64 bytes, and that's going to be called a page. And that's physically the smallest writable unit we have on a, on a solid state disk. But our smallest erasable unit is a block. So we can't erase a sector, and we can't erase those however many sectors we've written a file to. So they're still on our disk. Even after we've deleted our file and it's gone, if the garbage collection routine hasn't run, it still physically sits there indefinitely, maybe. So our smallest erasable unit is a block. And what that means is the manufacturer can choose the size of a block. It's either going to be 16, 32, or 64 times the amount of sectors that it is. So typically, the answer is 64. So most of the time, it's going to be 64 times 2048, which means you basically have 128K that has to be erased every time a block is released. So that's what you're calculating out. If you've got to erase something, it's 128K. <clears throat> so this is a comparison to what we're used to seeing from a hard drive versus solid state. So on the left-hand side, basically, your smallest writable unit is still a sector, 512 bytes. Smallest erasable unit is 512 bytes, and your smallest bad block is 512 bytes. But NAND, your smallest writable unit is a sector, so it's usually going to be the 2K. And then your smallest erasable one is going to be 64 times 2K for 128K. But at the same time, if you have a bad block, even one single bad cell in the entire section, it marks that entire block as bad. So you immediately lose 128K. So as you start looking at your size of your disk, you will actually see over time, as sectors go bad, if there's not enough spare sectors, the size of your memory stick will start to shrink. You'll actually start using And that's true of hard drives, too. Eventually, as you fill that up and you've, you've used all your bad blocks, physically what's going to happen is the size of the hard drive may sink, shrink as time goes on. So you have some shrinkage. So. I'm glad one of you's got it together. So what happened to the rest of you? Uh, anyway, so physically, this is the type of content that's kind of hard to find. It's not something that's easy to find. Is when you look at a hard drive and you look at one single sector, the code that's actually writing that, encoding the content, and writing this WAV file, that's what it looks like. This is one single sector on the left-hand side for a hard drive. It's pretty complicated. There's some legacy stuff in there. There's some stuff for calculations and what you're going to store. And you'll also see a large quantity of null bytes. And that's because when you're writing with a hard drive and the head physically reads a, a 1 or a 0 from a standpoint of a high or a low value, physically, if it's always high and there is no break, it never can tell where it ended. So it can never say, oh, I got a 1, I got a 1, I got a 1. It can't do that. So they have to physically put some null space in there so they can give the head a break to say, okay, here's, here's one, move on, and there's another one. So that's where all this null space and all this extra garbage comes from on the left-hand side. And basically, we've gotten rid of, in solid state, a lot of that legacy stuff. We don't have some of the same stuff carrying forward. So we have a lot smaller amount of space we have to keep track of. So you have, you have your data, which is the 512 bytes or the 2048. From, from that particular, and then you have your 16 bits, uh, bytes of data. So your 16 bytes of data, you'll have your service flags, you'll have your bad block status flag, and this was kind of smart actually, that basically what they did was they said, well we never stored anything in the cell that's actually at this particular number, which is like uh, 517 bytes into the disk or something like that, where the block status flag is. It has no cell that has ever been used, and physically it still sits there as an open cell. And if I want to, I'm going to say it's bad, and that's the only way, the only thing you have to do is write an electron into it, and then bam, you're done. It's now marked as a bad, bad sector. So at least from that standpoint, you've actually got a, a bad block right off the bat. And then you have some proprietary data, and then you have a small amount of error correction data. 